So welcome to this episode of Movement Medicine. Thank you again to our partners. So that's Fit India. So thank you again for your ongoing support. The Back to Fitness Clinic, which is the clinic that Rajat runs. La Ultra the High, which is the race that Rajat puts together. And the Moving Mountains Within Film, uh, Moving Mountains Within Film, which is the film that Rajat has put together about the 10th edition of La Ultra the High. So thank you again to our partners. Thank you to everyone that's tuning in. Please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel to help it grow. Share it with your friends, family and colleagues. And also add any questions or comments that you have in the, in the comments and description box underneath the video. So I'll hand over to Raja, who will introduce our guest. Thank you, Darren. And, you know, this whole series uh, is about fit doctors, doctors who are leading by example. And today is a special one. Erica. Erica is a gynecologist who's a specialist in infertility, uh, going to finish a PhD in like, a few months. And the most important, um, if I can say, qualification is she's actually 30 months pregnant. So she can say about oh, 30 weeks, sorry, months, my God, uh, 30 <laughs> weeks pregnant. Uh, so she'll just explain about things that, uh, which are very, very important practices uh, before she actually preaches all that. So Erica, welcome on board. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajat and uh, Darren for inviting me here and to share my knowledge with a lot of people. And this is a very good platform and I would like to put out a lot of things that I want people to know about uh, running, exercise, pregnancy, infertility, all of it. So, you know, first of all, Erica, your professional background, so if you can just take people through what you've done, because I think it matters a lot, the, you know, the three, four things that you've done. So please first your academic business. So I did my MBBS from uh, Dr. Deva Patel Medical College in Bombay. I did my uh, MS in gynecology from Baroda. After that, I did my uh, super speciality, that is my MCH in reproductive medicine and surgery from Sri Ramachandra Medical College in Chennai. And then after finishing that, I also enrolled for PhD in the same subject, that is reproductive medicine, and I'm doing some research on patients undergoing in vitro fertilization. I'm going to finish my PhD in another six months. I am also a practicing consultant with uh, Nova IVF Fertility since the past two and a half years. Okay, fantastic. And would you be able to introduce then your sort of your fitness journey, sort of all the way through from your childhood to where you are today, 30 weeks pregnant? <laughs> So I have always been into fitness since my schooling days. I was my state level badminton uh, player when I was in school till about 12th standard. Once I shifted to Bombay and Baroda, a little bit of playing reduced, but I've always worked out in the gyms near my college, near my hostel, all of that, a little bit here and there. I started running about uh, four years back. I shifted to Chennai after I got married. And I used to run by myself and then I found this wonderful group called Chennai Runners, which is a very big group and uh, a chapter of it called Petai Rappers is where I joined and where I was guided through um, by a few very senior runners on how to run and what to do and importance of strength training and all of it. And then I started doing my races and marathons and 10Ks and half marathons. So I've done a multiple... Uh, number of 10Ks and halves. I did my first full marathon in uh, Berlin in 2018. And uh, then I, I conceived in um, September last year, 2019. I'm currently 30 weeks pregnant. And I have continued my running through my pregnancy. I, run, I still run three days a week. Yesterday morning was my last run. So that's about it. So about running and, you know, the whole misconception, I would say that, you know, people have about pregnancy and uh, otherwise infertility and all that. Could you just please bring that out? Like, you know, yeah. how different is it from reality? So I being a gynecologist myself, I did a lot of research before I actually started running. I read a lot of papers. I read a lot of books on how safe it is, how safe exercise running, everything is. And I came to a conclusion that it is very, very safe if you are doing it, if you were doing it before you conceived. It's, it's very important to not start anything new as soon as you 
get pregnant but since i was already running i was it was safe enough for me to continue secondly it is very important to get the clearance from your gynec that there are no other complications that it is an absolutely normal pregnancy there are no complications like say placenta previa or in pregnancy or anything like that and then you are good to go in spite of all this i did uh, do it under a coach a coach who who had knowledge of working with pregnant athletes because i am a gynecologist yes that's my knowledge but i think coaches like you who are into fitness would know more of the exercise aspect of it so and i was guided through uh, by him throughout my pregnancy it is very important to accept the fact that you're going to be much slower you're going to run very few uh, kilometers compared to what you were doing it is very important to not increase the intensity rather stay at the same intensity or reduce it and i mean whatever it is how much ever i would run i would call it as the that was my maternity mile so um and it is good it is good in terms of having a healthy pregnancy having um i also along with running i did continue my strength work and i also joined um, prenatal yoga classes because it is very very important to maintain the pelvic muscle strength since you are taking up a high impact sport so that you don't have any complications after you um deliver secondly i would like to tell people that at any point of time if there is any symptom any discomfort anything just stop it and just be thankful for whatever amount of running that you got because obviously the pregnancy is more important but it is definitely definitely safe um to run in pregnancy okay thank you that's a very important message so when has it changed your practice so when you're seeing ladies in the clinic who may have you know exercised before they became pregnant but now are very reluctant to continue with their exercise yeah. have you had to sort of overcome those sort of barriers and suggest that it is very important for them to continue so here we do have a very big cultural barrier also apart from a physical barrier when it comes to exercise in pregnancy and uh, there is a there is a large group of people who think that pregnant women should just be um, resting eating relaxing and nothing else but what happens here is there are a lot of times that we see that instead of the recommended 10 to 15 kg of weight gain that you should have pregnant women end up getting a 25 to 30 kg weight gain and then it becomes so difficult for them to lose that it leads to even more complications like a gestational diabetes or a hypertension or anything like that and when they get gestational diabetes is then when they start walking because then the doctor recommends walking so i feel that patients who have already been doing some sort of physical activity i always advise them to continue it uh maybe a little less in the first trimester but second trimester is very very safe they can start their walks they can they they, they don't need to be running but even uh something like yoga and pelvic floor exercises and your glute and your quad strengthening things like that that are very very safe and breathing techniques which would even help them in being calm during the labor process all of that is highly recommended apart from that in my clinic i see a lot of uh, infertility patients so here exercise is like a separate prescription that i give on how much to do it how to do it how many days so it is very very beneficial in pcod patients who form like a majority chunk of uh, my infertility population pcod being polycystic ovarian disease where patients are unable to ovulate on their own and it has been proven and our guidelines also say that in these patients just losing that 5% of body weight through exercise and nutrition initiates ovulation automatically and they do not need any other treatment for pregnancy and they can conceive just by doing 45 minutes of um, aerobic exercise five times a week and they are good to go so it is very very important to know 
exercise prescription when it comes to dealing with infertility patients that's interesting though erica right i mean most people here whether the women who are pregnant or or, or tem- attempting to right or the family or the parents yes. the grandparents they are telling them don't move don't do anything yes. because that'll go you know that'll be detrimental uh, why is that the case because probably because they have seen a lot of loss of pregnancies or maybe a prior miscarriage so there is a list of patients in whom i do not recommend exercise that yes these are certain patients who should not that's why it is very very important to get a clearance from your gynecologist before you take up running or any sort of exercise and nowadays it is so important even in our cmes we now try to spread the message amongst fellow gynecologists also so it is very important that uh, especially the mothers and the mother in laws and the grandmothers so there are times when i have to call all of them inside the room and give that exercise prescription and tell them that it is good for the patient to do it so that she is allowed to do it because we are seeing a very 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 high incidence of gestational diabetes in um, these days and even even just forget gestational even diabetes in general so that is why um, so my family owns a hospital in uh, amdabad and we were thinking we should do like a yearly cme instead we decided to just organize a marathon every year to to show that how fitness is the answer to a lot of things and we did our first edition of kd marathon last year and the theme being to outrun diabetes to just spread the awareness because what i am seeing now is that patient a comes patient b comes with diabetes then the exercise is prescribed and then they start doing it i really want patients to start doing it before they get these diseases it is so important to prevent it rather than use exercise as a cure for non communicable diseases so yeah no absolutely i i think that's absolutely fundamental you touched on this slightly the importance of the family so do you recommend that they also get involved with the exercise yes it is very 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 helpful and it is very motivating when family members are there along with you and motivating you to do it like in my family everybody everybody literally either works out runs goes to the gym and it just takes that one person to start in the family and then then they can keep motivating each other and erica have you seen a change with our you know colleagues from our fraternity are they are they moving around enough because you know we are the guys who sometimes or most of the times saying the wrong things because we don't know enough yes uh, and because we don't do it so we have no yeah. idea so has that have you seen a change in that space so yes Doctors i have yes i have seen a little bit of change because say 5 years 10 years before the only excuse we would come up with is that we are doctors we don't have time we are doctors we don't have time but uh, i myself being a gynecologist doing my phd i know how i wake up at 4:30 in the morning and do get that run in so it's just about getting yourself motivated finding time is not very difficult but we as doctors tend to use that as the uh, biggest excuse of not doing it so i have actually seen dr rajesh that in a in a couple of cmes that i've attended and a couple of conferences that i've attended lately they are using um, the talking about these topics on exercise and how it can be used to prevent non communicable as well as communicable uh, yeah. diseases now because it is so important for your uh, immunity that uh, so i'm i'm hoping that more and more doctors will get into fitness it is a good example to set for your own patients yeah yeah no of course um so you you've obviously sort of discussed the probably the biggest misconception which is that you shouldn't be doing exercise during your pregnancy are there any other misconceptions so um there's a lot of nutritional uh, misconceptions uh, that are there because uh, a lot of um, old age tales and everything they they feel that pregnant women should be eating all these uh, 
everything and the biggest thing misconception is that you should be eating for two people you should be eating for two people you do or your meal should be double the amount and this again again this also leads to uh, preeclampsia gestational hypertension preterm labor wrong eating practices and uh, hence i would also like to say that it is very very important that you get your nutrition right you eat well but it just because you are pregnant does not mean you have to eat for two people what about you know tips for patients uh, whether they are you know gynae patients or otherwise uh, talking about this whole physical activity how important is it uh, you know we keep talking about if there could be a pill the magic pill that should be exercise yes you know how true is that what do you think i think it is very very true and being uh, now that i am at this stage in my pregnancy i am also sitting and thinking that when i have the child i want to embed this whole exercise conception into his or her head from the very beginning this exercise uh, and fitness habit should be incorporated from school should be incorporated in their syllabus it should be incorporated in everything so that it becomes a way of life rather than uh, rather than something that you are told to do or you should be doing also it has helped in improving so many diseases like i mean obesity diabetes hypertension or metabolic syndrome is is like a known thing but now if you see irritable bowel syndromes or acidity or type a personality anxiety depression all psychotic uh, psychiatric diseases and this communicable diseases all your infections being covid 19 that is going on i i i feel that if you are exercising and if you have built your immunity well you are going to have the power to fight it off on your own instead of medicines yeah yeah not necessarily great. instead but together right more together yes. rather than just yeah yes <laughs> yeah. yeah so during this lockdown period erica what would be your recommendations for pregnant women mums and young children to stay active so for pregnant women i highly highly recommend um, a yoga and um, what they can do at home being two reasons one is it helps you build that little bit of little bit of pelvic strength and also a lot of pregnant women are very very anxious and i won't lie if i say that even i am very anxious about what will happen if this does not go if i have to go to deliver to the hospital and the hospital has covid patients they are very natural scares and they are causing a lot of anxiety in all my pregnant patients also that what if i get it will it affect my baby what if my somebody in the house has it when the baby is born so these are a few questions that uh, i would like them to know that it is so what happens is when you do yoga some sort of if you have a terrace where you can walk or get some fresh air i would recommend them not to get out of the house it is okay not to run or not to walk but you can do some breathing exercises some pranayama some yoga stretches something at home to calm your mind secondly i would like to tell them that there has been no evidence as such yet about vertical transmission that is uh, covid-19 getting transmitted from the mother to the baby uh are not it's not been proven yet so there are chances that if you have it your baby may not uh, get it even uh, all the hospitals are taking adequate precautions when it comes to delivering pregnant women and taking care of the baby worst case scenario you have covid-19 and your baby doesn't just a few precautions like washing your hands before touching your baby wearing your mask getting treated staying a little away from your baby for a couple of days till you are um, uh, treated and the last thing is uh, breastfeeding there is no ca- no evidence of covid-19 being uh, released into the breast milk so it is very very safe to uh, breastfeed your child in this time and that's about it that's my advice to the pregnant patients basically i want them not to panic and just be calm and deliver erica actually there okay, was a thank you erica 
There was a paper I read recently, as in you know today morning, uh, which was talking about if the mom is you know is COVID positive, mm. uh, the child is actually almost has immunity to it. You know, they're saying actually none of the children are having. Now yeah. I don't know. Not yeah. a single case has been reported till now, and even the RCOG guidelines on pregnancy say that uh, there is no case of transmission to the baby. And yes, I would probably believe it being theoretically that yes, if the mother has it and she's going to produce antibodies to it, and those antibodies can cross the placental barrier and give that immunity uh, to the baby. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Erica. It was a thank pleasure so having much. you over uh, on uh, Movement Podcast, and uh, thank you, Darren. Guys, just thank you very subscribe much. to our channel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erica. Thank and you. And see you guys till the next episode. See you guys. Keep keep safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Roger.